Hey, look, we've got a really exciting TNC podcast ahead today. Mark and Mike Tanayazo, you guys want to know more about them? Well, the answers are here, Chris. Yeah, so excited. Cannot believe, Jack, that we've gone from getting their names wrong. Yeah, Big Mike. Definitely calling one of them Magic Mike <laughs> to them actually doing a podcast. And fair play to the club for, for, for allowing us to do it. And fair play to Mike and Mark actively wanting to do it as well. I'm so excited for, for the Norwich fans to get stuck into this. And um, hopefully it gives you guys some hope and some optimism that our club is moving forwards. Uh, the future for them, the future for the club, all answered in this podcast. Enjoy. Mark, Mike, uh, Atanasio, first of all, I want to say thank you uh, for taking time out. I know it's been a very busy schedule for your few days in Norwich. You've obviously been to Norwich before, Mark, but it must be nice to return in maybe a slightly more relaxed capacity. You're starting to know some more faces, meeting some new people. What's life been like in the fine city? Yeah, Mike and I were part of a travel party here at the end of May. We were for the last match of the season. Uh, and there's always a little, uh, I don't know, tentativeness when everyone's meeting for the first time. And, and on both sides, right? We, uh, both Delia and Michael, and we wanted this to work, but we never met face to face. And uh, we had a wonderful dinner at her restaurant here, and, and everything went, you know, very well after that. And... Uh, I was surprised how comfortable I was coming back. Oh, it was really? all very familiar. Uh, listen, it's very, I've said in some of the U.S. interviews, it's very similar to Milwaukee, the city, in terms of being very welcoming and friendly. And I think you found that too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mike, I, I must say before we get into it, the jumper. I'm loving it. So you, you. you, you came, the first time you came over, you've stashed your wardrobe so out with yeah, Norwich City merch, up. have you? I stocked up, yeah. Let's throw Mike under the bus straight away, though. You did say, Mike, that um, you, you got a particular item in the clearance sale the first time you visited. So what was, what was the item for the yeah. Norwich fans? It was like a velvety robe, bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> very, very vibrant green robe that I wear around the house. I love it's great. That. Incredibly and comfortable. And, and yeah. do people that see you in it like it as well as much as you, or is there a, a slight? I think only my wife's the only person that sees me in it. <laughs> but uh, we both, we split it. It fits both of us. Which oh, is nice, nice. Yeah. nice. She M loves it. Mark, did you get anything from the club shop at all? <laughs> not, uh, not a bright green velvet robe. I got, <laughs> a, I got a good looking scarf I may wear today. Nice. I yeah. got some socks. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, wow. There we go. You've got to have a pair of yellow and green socks yeah. on match day. That's, that's a tradi tradition. In, in their hotel room, my mom, there were probably 20 bags full of Norwich stuff. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, we, my, mom, my mom is good. the best shopper. She has incredible taste. And she, uh, yeah. We've got a lot of stuff. We, we, she, she told her we we're going to beat the budget for retail. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you know. we, we should start, Jack, with wh why on earth have you guys come on this podcast, right? Because, Mike, you, we first came into contact through social media. You, you told me that your, your Norwich stream broke for the Reading game. So yeah, we, how did that all work? Yeah, we, uh, we were in yeah. Milwaukee during our baseball season. And uh, we watch every match, or the Norwich match. And uh, the the stream was blacked out. <laughs> you can't watch every game in the US. I know you can't watch every game here. Yeah. But I was I went on Twitter and I searched you know, Norwich Reading and your guys profile came up. <laughs> and you there were you promoting were. <laughs> your live stream. So I clicked on that and it was just in time to see I believe it was Grant Hanley's goal and <laughs> watching <laughs> watching you guys go crazy, <laughs> crazy in celebration after the goal. Got yeah. we thought it was hilarious. And you'll so think what, what, these guys? Yeah. what have we got ourselves into? Yeah. What have we got ourselves so into? So fun. Blame, yeah. blame the beer sponsor. Blame the beer sponsor. <laughs> Mark, I think this is a, a brilliant opportunity. Obviously Norwich fans will, will be aware of you now. They would have um, you know come to become very familiar with with your work. I want to just kind of provide context around your journey because everyone's seeing you now and the profile you've built and the obvious success out in America with Milwaukee. Let's talk about childhood. Grew up in, in the Bronx. Um, Bronx, New York, near Yankee Stadium. Talk to me about that. What was that like being a, being a kid there? You, you know, it's interesting. I went back and everything was, I remembered it being much bigger. Uh, I grew up in an Italian-American neighborhood in the Bronx and uh, actually a lot of immigrants then. Um, I remember the schoolyard being enormous. I went back, it was tiny. <laughs> <you know? Yeah. laughs> PS108. But, uh, you know, as a kid, you played sports and you didn't have the kind of media and things you had today. Once a week, I'd watch a bit. There was a game of the week for baseball, mm. black and white television. And wow. uh, 
you know, I also remember, by the way, when we landed a man on the moon that was also saw on a little black and white television. Wow. And uh, some people think that's a hoax. I don't think it's a hoax. And you, you <laughs> grew up a, a Yankees fan, didn't you? Yeah. But it was yeah. at a time when they weren't as successful as they are now. Has that gone down? Are you a Yankees fan as well? No. Or? No. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. Is, is, is that a bit of controversy in the family? Or? Wow. <laughs> I've been a Brewers fan through and through. I Good see. Man. Yeah. Good I man. See. Um, so growing up, supporting um, the Yankees, and then you kind of made the start of your career. Just talk to us. What were your first steps? Because you were a... A lawyer to start yeah, with? I worked as an, a lawyer for, I just did a uh, speech for about 100 people in Milwaukee and somebody said, why'd you leave the law? And I, I hate to say this, but it's boring <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, you ba and, 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 you know, no disrespect. In fact, last night we're at a sponsored dinner. There's a couple of attorneys at the table and you know, attorney, a good attorney is, is worth their weight in gold. But, you know, they're basically documenting things that other people are doing. Right. And so I was more interested in doing things. Uh, not realizing, of course, how hard it is to do things. <laughs> it's Absolutely. easier to just document what other people do. And um, Mike, w what was growing up for you? I know you're you're, you're a keen athlete yourself. Um, just talk to me. Hey, about you should see Mike with yeah. the soccer ball yesterday. Oh wow! The, Hello. Because you, know, you went to the training ground, didn't you? Yeah. I did. Yeah. So yeah. are you going to be uh, starting up front <laughs> in a couple of seasons? Or? I hadn't picked up a, a football in, God, since I was like eight or nine. Uh, unfortunately, I, I was told I was pretty good at football back in the day okay and, uh, he was he was on a, you know they yeah. picked kids for travel teams and stuff yeah. and he was picked for that but un unfortunately when it came time to decide whether I wanted to play more seriously and do travel and go around the country I told my parents I only wanted to play basketball which and you would play at a level of basketball it was a, a good standard I, pl I ended up playing a, at a division three school in college yeah. at, at MIT but uh, given my my stature I probably should have stuck with football just um, was was sport ever kind of going to be a viable career for you? Because we'll get on to what y you do now. But was that ever a thought, or did you always want to do what you're what you're doing now? I mean, I would have liked it <laughs> liked for it to be a thought. Uh, I think every <laughs> every young kid thinks they can be a professional and uh, wants to be. But yeah, I thought I was going to uh, be a center fielder for the Yankees, <laughs> <laughs> and now you're sat here with us. <laughs> Man, I, I thought I was going to be a point guard on the Lakers. Which, okay. And here we are. Here we are. Exactly. <laughs> um, you, with you guys. Yeah. Well, we, we, we wanted to be... What about you guys? Do you guys do sports? Uh, on, I, I played uh, left back in the changing room. <laughs> I was uh, not very good at all. Well, that's, we needed that's the, the clubs English needed a, le a left back, right? <laughs> well, well, you we know, some Stuart, we've had some injuries there, right? Yeah, 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 well, you know, you never know, you never know. We, um, I think play is a very loose sense for us. We, uh, yeah, we, we prefer watching. You like to think you can play, but you're awful. Yeah, I've come to the realisation that I can't really play football. Um, <laughs> Mark, let's fast forward to your purchasing of the Brewers, 2004. You were obviously a very busy man. I know family's incredibly important to you. What in your brain went, I know what will, will you know, keep me going. I'll buy a, a Major League Baseball team. You know, the opportunity came up through a friend in Milwaukee and originally was to make a minority investment, really sort of like how we started here. But uh, uh, the Selig family that owned the, actually founded the club mm. He was, uh, Bud Seeler was then the commissioner of baseball. And, and so uh, you know, it was deemed to be a conflict at some point to both oversee the sport and own one of the teams. So we looked to sell the entire team. And, uh, you know, you th I threw my hat in the ring thinking that li literally when I was about this age now, if I became known to baseball in 20 years, as it's been, this will be season 19. Wow, yeah. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd maybe be able to retire and, and, and own a club. I'm not ready to retire. <laughs> and, and then it got down to we were one of the three finalists. And I thought, you know, you never, it's really hard to buy any sort of a professional sports team. It really is because, as mentioning meeting Delia and Michael, besides having to you know, have the money lined up and everything else, there has to be a chemistry because, mm -hmm. uh, in any sport, the, the clubs are very, you know, personal to the owners, and they care about. You're as much a, a steward as you're really more of a steward for a community as as you are an owner, and and so you know, I did the final two weeks of the process in Milwaukee. I went around the city. It was almost like you're campaigning, you mm. know, and uh, you know, it all it all worked out, and uh, here we are today. When you say campaigning, what do you, as in that you're the I, right fit, or you're trying to win the no, fans? Well, no, they, they were. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't just fans. It was politicians. It was local leaders. Oh, wow. It was shareholders in the club. 
Um, they had a, uh, at that point they had a one share one, but it w would almost be like going to the AGM here and mm -hmm. trying to say to everybody, you know, do you like me? Which, by the way, I think is some of what we're both trying to see here. I talked about uh, in the meeting the other night that this is more of like an ongoing dialogue mm -hmm. than a negotiation mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, see how, if we can help. I think we can help, by the way, and see if people want us to help. Mm. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the, the folks at the club, but, you know, if the fans in the community have been really, really welcoming. Yeah. That was the first. We didn't, we didn't know that that would be the case, you know, coming from America. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first thing you, you speak about, that. What, how do we help? You know, what, what can we learn? I noticed that from our, our first conversation, we had a Zoom call, didn't we, Mike? And you mm -hmm. said, like, we really want to learn. We really want to help. And you have quite a lot of emphasis on that, which, which I like and is very important, which is just absolutely essential for establishing a relationship with a fan base. And you speak there of your, your first conversation with Dealer and Michael as well. Let's, let's quickly tune into that. What were your first impressions of, of Dealer and Michael? Did you expect them to be as warm and as welcoming as, as, they, as, as we know that they are? Well, that, that's Delia's reputation and she, and, and by the way, anywhere, so I, I mentioned uh, before we, we got on camera that I've been approached in a lot of stadia uh, about, you know, from Norwich fans. In every context, I've, I've, know, I've met people who know of her and all ask, well, is she really as nice as she, uh, you know? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not always the case, as we know with people. And, uh, you know, she's beloved really around the world. And, and Michael is, you know, more quiet. But, you know, very, he's written books. He's very studious. He, we talked the other night. He's met uh, you know, one of the uh, politicians. I, I talked about growing up and watching Man Land on the Moon. I, I grew up as a yeah. young person, you know, uh, watching the, the challenges the Kennedy family had. With, and Robert Kennedy was like sort of a, an icon for me as a 10-year-old. And, uh, and, well, Michael Lynn Jones spent two hours with Robert Kennedy in Washington, D.C. Wow. in 1968. So, um, you know, they really balance each other, you know, in a very nice way. He tells a good story, Mark Wynne-Jones. He did a chapter for a, a book called Tales from the City, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you, got you guys a copy because I know that you're learning about the, the legends and the stories and stuff, and Mark Wynne-Jones has a chapter in that, and by the end of it, I, it literally makes me well yeah. up now. It was just so emotional, so you must, must read that. Such, a, such an articulate fellow with a, with a great storytelling technique, I think. Absolutely, and Mark, you were involved with, with conversations from the start as well with the club, weren't you? What yeah. were your initial mm -hmm. thoughts and, and feelings? Yeah, Mike was on the very first video call we, we did. Mm. Actually, I don't think we were together because I was on vacation. And Where we, were you we, on vacation, please? Uh, in, in Hawaii. I don't <laughs> want to oh, very oh, nice. I was in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good as Norwich, but it's okay, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were meeting all the exec, not Michael and Delia, but all the executives for the first time. And the video call was scheduled for about an hour and it went on for two hours. <laughs> okay. And so we thought that was a good sign. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike brings a lot of energy to our, our uh, family's interest in sports. And uh, at least at the, at the Brewers, we haven't really, we just met a lot of the guys for the first time here. But he knows a lot of our players and uh, friendly with them, and oh, you're kind of their age. Actually, now yeah. you're getting to point you're a little older than us. I know. <laughs> what I was, th I was thinking that about happen? that recently. Yeah. yeah. And we bought the yeah. Brewers. He was in like you know fifth or sixth grade, yeah. and now he's older than the guys. It must yeah. be amazing, Mike, to to have gone on that journey. I mean, how old were you went in t in 2004? You must have been relatively young. Yeah, 13. Yeah. So yeah. you've wow. kind of, yeah. I guess, your whole teenage life and now into adulthood of seeing that process it must be yeah. so lovely to look at the progress yeah it's it's been amazing i think seeing it from all sides uh really getting to know the players in milwaukee and understanding what they go through and having a personal relationship with them and on the business side understanding what all the you know, employees and executives do in milwaukee well that must just be just really yeah understanding a, both sides from a learning is, perspective Mike, that yeah. must be incredible because you've grown up you've seen how it operates you've seen how your dad and other people operate and now you're able to really be in that system and, and implement those things i mean you must be in a really good place right now yeah and everything is connected you know you it, it really is a group effort um, the success of an organization mm. from the players to the staff everybody and that's what we we talk about in milwaukee mm. a lot and um you know, you're really all in it together and uh, that family and community atmosphere we've really seen here. So, wow. a lot of parallels. Oh, 
Hello. Awesome. <laughs> Testing the stadium. That's, we are in yellows yeah. today. We, we must are. Mention. It's very nice. Have, yeah. you, have you been in yellows before? Or oh, yeah. Or yeah, yeah. very, free, when we got here uh, back in May, the, we, our first meal was here. Yeah. It's very pleasant, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. great. And by the way, you talk about the love that Delia and Michael have for the city. The, all these drawings are on here from a local artist. Amazing, yeah. aren't they? did in yeah. COVID. And, uh, you know, looking around, it's a big there's Norwich. Absolutely. How did you rate the American food? Obviously, Yellow's being an American <laughs> diner. Like, mm -hmm. Does it live up to expectations? Obviously, they've got a, food, you know? They've got a great burger here. Have yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. Our, really our, good. That, first, that first meal was here. Remember, yeah. we were all, the, the first time we were all getting to know each other, and we sat down and... And you tucked into uh, a big old burger. <laughs> tucked into a big burger. And you, you ordered a, yeah. like a pint. Well, sure. I asked what the, what the local beer was, and uh, Sam Jeffrey, one of the club uh, yeah. execs, said, you know, Woodford's Wary. Yeah. yeah. And I said, great, I'll grab one of those. And they were all looking at me like, I was <laughs> like, they're like, what, you're getting that? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, downed it. Yeah. yeah, really good. At noon. Before, before yeah. we got yeah. really interrupted by the alarm, I was, was going to say, Mike, and I'm going to put Mark under a bit of pressure here. What was it like working with your dad in a sporting sense? Because we know, and you know, having watched our watch long, emotions are heightened in sport, right? Yes. So <laughs> how do you, you keep your father-son relationship in the personal world, but also do do business effectively as well. I'm fascinated to understand that. Yeah, well, he's done he's done such a great job of uh, including my brother and me in the process, and um, it's the Brewers especially has has really become a, a family thing, a family business. We watch all the games together. We we talk about all the games, uh, all decisions and important decisions that are made. He does a really great job of including us in and my mom and so it's really not a it's not a personal thing for him as although he's the principal owner it really does feel like a family thing and uh, I feel as much a part of it as as he does and we all do so it's been it's been great so when you've watched the the Norwich game you came and watched a glorious game against Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> right? it was a, it's yeah. a tough second half there, yeah. Yeah. first there half some, went pretty well yeah were, were there some like disagreements in opinion like how, how do you I mean, how do you debate I, football compared I will to say I, we didn't know enough right back then yeah um, it was just fun to be here and yeah. the atmosphere was just unbelievable even seeing the Tottenham fans too but it was just so fun to be there yeah and now, now that we know all the players and uh, we've watched all the we're matches this year. We're starting to form some we're opinions. I don't, I don't think the opinions are very uh, educated, but we think we, we like to think we, we don't uh, have a clue what we're talking about either. Yeah. We just make up as we go along. Yeah. So oh, why didn't he do worry. this? Why didn't he do that? We don't know if we're, you know, it's just fun though. I'm aware of the fact that it's very much a, a family affair over at the Brewers. And the, the thing that we had for the end, but I'm going to ask you right now is I love the annual tradition of, of singing the, the, the national anthem. I think that's absolutely incredible. What what was that like for yourself for the first time, Mike? Because I know that it's been something that's almost been passed down <laughs> yeah, through the yeah. through the ages. Yeah, that that was my grandfather's tradition. He was the singer in the family. He had actor, a great voice. Entertainer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, and, and he sang the anthem for what eight was it eight seasons? Uh, eight seasons? Yeah. No. Uh, oh, wow. Wow. From oh five to. 15, even. Oh, 10, wow. yeah. He actually, sadly, he passed from uh, small cell lung cancer. He, he In World War II, he started smoking wow. at the age of 19. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare that it would present at the age of 89. But he still went out with, and nobody knew, I mean, oh, I wow. knew, and, and sang very emotional wow. for me to see that wow. tape. So uh, Mike and his brother wanted to continue that tradition. Good for you. Uh, now, I will say we found that there's a young yeah. girl at the, at now who's yeah. with like the age of 10 who's got unbelievable yeah, voice right. yeah. uh, so we've had her do it for a couple of years She's okay. 12 or 13 yeah. the now. team the team's record when my grandfather sang was, yeah. was something like eight wins and one loss or nine wins <laughs> yeah, and one so loss I mean, and then he sang before a playoff game and we won yeah. so then the guy said why does he sing every game <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. he sings the opening games <laughs> it's yeah. an incredible tradition I, and i don't know if you know but there's also a tradition before every single norwich game we sing our, our on the ball city song the oldest mm. football song in the world and I don't know if you're aware, but Stuart and, and, and Dealer and Michael told me in the terms of your contract <laughs> that you've agreed to start on the Ball City. <laughs> Is that something that interests you, Mark? Would you be up for singing I, on the Ball City? I'd, to be, the fans? I'd be up for it. I, I do not have a good, I do not have my dad's <laughs> That's voice. That's fine. You don't need to have a good voice. Just, just get the fans up for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fine, do done deal. Sure. Get, yeah. Going back to your kind of early meetings with, with Delia and Michael, am I right that they invited you for, for dinner? Did you have here or did you go to there? No, we went to Delia's. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had that, yeah, they invited us and we had a travel party, so we all came. Yeah. And 
By the way, when you go to Delia's with Delia, you get treated pretty well. I bet you do. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to admit to a huge knowledge of baseball, but I was, I was doing some research. And am I right in pronouncing his name? Jeff Supan? Jeff Supan. Jeff Supan. And that was a big deal back in, back in the day. Yeah, so we, and wasn't that done over kind of a family dinner as well? Yeah, we had, uh, like at the point we had bought into the Brewers, um, they had had 11 or 12 losing seasons, you know, more losses than wins. They would not been to the playoffs in 22 years, <clears throat> sort of the measure of success, sort of getting like getting promoted here. Mm. And therefore, it, and the budget had gone down, and and so we did, did not sign free agents. So and, and I know here with transfer would be a little different, but when a player's contract runs out, he can sign with any team sure. and sort of shops himself. So he had Soup come over to the house. And uh, we had prepared a video of highlights of our, because, you know, he was, he was, in fact, that year, I think he had pitched for the Cardinals into the World Series. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And we were the lowly brewers, so he did like a, we pat, yeah. uh, put a couple of highlights yeah, together. It was not that yeah. easy at that time, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that many highlights. Yeah. And uh, we convinced him uh, to join. And it really put us on the map, you know, to, that we could, you know, we, we now, we believe, uh, look, obviously, you go play for the Yankees or the Dodgers or whoever. Uh, but uh, aside from maybe the Cardinals, we think we're the next destination for players. Some of that, by the way, is we have a, a retractable roof mm. at oh. the ballpark, so it, uh, we control the climate. Yeah. And, nice. Uh, you know, it's not always playing in Milwaukee in April. Uh, we've had opening days where it's snowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it's indoors and it's, you know, 68 degrees. It's, it's a little... You know, nice environment. You've got a retractable roof. Have you seen our turning screen here? At <laughs> Do you like that? Do you rate that, Mike? I have. I have seen yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Turns, turns. What do you think about it? Well, I'm, I'm all for it. I can't see it that well yeah. from where we sit, but. What where, do you guys, where do you guys sit? You guys have so tickets? if you look at the screen, we're kind of right up against the wall. So no, we're next to the away fans. So yeah. we're either giving them a bit of stick or yeah. receiving it. Uh -huh. So it's quite heated. <laughs> what in just back to, to, to soups, do you call him, Jeff? Je so, yeah, so soup. Soup, I like that. What interests me with that is I think in, in business, and you'll know better than we do, I th you know, it's sometimes I think relationships are lost. And it seems as if you're often really centered around personal kind of relationships. And that interested me that you went to meet Delia and Michael at their house. That's a big deal. The fact that they trusted you and invited their into, into their home. How important yeah, well, is that wasn't for you? It, well, in, well, this and so forth, Zerm. We, we haven't been to their home yet. Yeah, yeah. They, they have invited us if uh, we need a place ever to stay in London to use their flat, which was very uh, gracious of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, increasingly I, I find in life, especially with, you know, uh, communications and texts and whatnot, uh, relationships have become transactional mm. and I think you do much better mm. in person which I've tried to talk to Mike and Dan about my other son uh, when you go somewhere and see someone it makes a difference and uh, or, or not right if you if you don't connect uh, you know like for example we like watching you guys on the YouTube channel or whatever but I still can't believe know. that <laughs> <laughs> but it, if we were here, you know, when we met our friend here, if, you know, who are these guys? We, we might have walked out. Yeah. You, know, you don't well, know. I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, 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 things have become too transactional, I think, mm. and, and you try to make them personal. How many times do you hear someone say, I talked to someone, and they text it? Mm. They may have never even met. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I talked to them. Well, that's not talking. Th this yeah. is talking. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm a little old school with that. Well, I think it's good, and I think it's... You, I know, Chris. You were really interested with with the, the community work, weren't you? I mean, yeah. Well, that's just obvious to me. Like that, you guys are all in on that and looking people in the whites of the eyes, shaking their hands. I'm, I'm so impressed with your community work over where you are. Just, just for, for the Norwich fans that aren't aware of that yet, what, is it like a, an annual thing that that you give a certain amount of money or something to certain charities? Like, talk, talk to us about yes. that. So we'll give. Uh my wife and Mike's mom, Debbie, credit for this. In fact, she's at the Nest now while we're Amazing. doing this interview. Yeah. He said, don't you want to watch, watch us? <laughs> I said, no, I'm going to go see the, because that, you know, we, we kids, had seen yeah. it, but she wants to see the kids and yeah, all Pat. the great work that's Incredible, done yeah. in the community here. When we uh, joined the club, you know, in Milwaukee, they had something called Brewers Charities. It had dwindled down to a, a few hundred thousand dollars and was not self-sustaining, so we rebranded it at her, Debbie's urging, uh, Brewers Community Foundation. Mm. We give out upwards of $2 million a year now wow. per year. 
Fantastic. And really, there's just a few hundred thousand dollars left to 200 local area charities. Amazing. And uh, well done. You know, Congratulations. We, and we thank you. And, and it's uh, listen. You can always do more. We mm. focus on what can we do more, do better. And uh, but it's impactful. And you can see what's getting done here at the Nest. Mm. Is that yeah. was. Very meaningful. I think I think I've heard you mention it, or it m may have been you, Mike. The Nest. I know you've seen the training ground as well. I mean, Carrow Road is is a glorious place, but the infrastructure, particularly over the last decade, is it's an, it's an impressive place now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Top to bottom, everything here is is incredibly impressive. I think we that was one of the most attractive things about coming here is mm. that it's not just not just Carrow Road. It's the training facility is top notch in the country and. Mm. And, and the nest is is fabulous. So there's just there's so much more to it than than, than just the team and, and the matches, which yeah. is really cool. And they manage yeah. at the nest. Too. It's not just a, you know it's from you see all ages there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, look, it's important for, the, for these you know, clubs to be a part of the fabric of the community. Mm -hmm. And and I think a lot of the the passion we see for the team, including sometimes when people are unhappy, I always say it's better. That people care absolutely yeah. if you don't care so <laughs> true so what true. did you make of um uh, actually i, I want to start with um no i know i think you've talked before that there's been interest from other english football clubs over the years of potentially mm -hmm. you buying into <coughs> or etc what was different about Norwich and, and why are we at this stage now where you there's clear interest from a financial point of view and an emotional point of view what stood out for you so yeah no we've looked at clubs probably for 10 years mm -hmm. and uh, you know th this it, it's interesting when you, you think about karma the way it all came together so Teddy Werner who's uh, Tom Werner is the chairman of Liverpool he mm. worked with us for 16 years or so I see. he looked at a lot of things with us he now is working with Fenway Sports Group but th this came in and uh, you, know, you do introductory calls in a lot of these cases and, and as I was saying that the two-hour video call really you know clicked in a way that other approaches didn't and the, the parallels with milwaukee just eerie the type mm. of community the size of the club the history um the the similar uh, shift where you know have long time loved owners who are looking to find the, the right next steward maybe um and the, the same appro the, the approach that the, the club has to what goes on in the, the pitch here is what we had in terms of the Brewers going on in the field mm -hmm. where you try to you know you try to punch well above your weight yeah. in terms of what you try to do and commitment to excellence so uh, you know but it all but it all really came together when we visited on site in May mm -hmm. and uh, we're very comfortable here yeah. What is it with Mike at the moment with, and I guess over the past decade, we're seeing more and more American ownership of particularly Premier League clubs, but of course championship clubs as well. Yeah. What is it that- And, and below. And below. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Ju not just Ryan uh, Reynolds, whatever, with Wrexham. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. We, we, there's, a, you know, uh, there's a US pension fund that we were soliciting for money at my money management firm. Yeah. And they're a big investor in Ipswich Town. Oh, oh. sorry to hear that. <laughs> Don't swear on this podcast, Mark. I told you about this before. Don't swear on this podcast. Um, it, yeah, it, and I, I learned of the rivalry. Yeah. I actually met the CEO of Ipswich Town oh. on, on a video. Sorry and to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it well, my... It's funny, though, but it's like they, they just want to be us here. You know, it's oh, well, well, they're yeah, desperate to be us. Copying everything Absolutely, we do. they are. Um, and, but, but they're not. No, they're not, and that's the special thing. Is it my? Do you think that kind of English football is still almost an undervalued asset from from American point of view? Well, I think you know soccer is or football is the is the global game. Yeah, and um, you know I think in in the U.S. a lot of kids' uh, attentions are divided between basketball, football, baseball, hockey, and soccer is kind of bringing up the rear. And with the U.S. team not making the World Cup in 2018, it was mm -hmm. a shame. I think it had that happened, I think you would have seen the sport grow even quicker. But now with the MLS rising, and the fandom around the uh, the MLS is huge now. Uh, our our local team in uh, in L.A. won the Cup this year, LAFC, and the the was crowds were Bale unbelievable. Yeah. Gareth Bale, yeah. yep, scored yeah, the amazing. tying goal in the yeah. 120th minute. And uh, so I think with the rise in, in the popularity of of the MLS plus the U.S. being in the World Cup this year, unfortunately, playing against 
you guys in England <laughs> in, in the in the group well, stage. If I've, Josh uh, scores yeah. and we win, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm okay, okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think even if Josh scores the winner against us, I'll probably sell it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm more going into the World Cup supporting Josh than I am England, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but really you see so you see just a lot of the interest in, in America is, is really yeah. growing rapidly. Mm. And I think you'll see it grow even more after this, this World Cup, mm. uh, assuming we do well. The uh, fact that it can, you can so. see it, right? So yeah. you all are on, uh, well, we can't, I can't get this on uh, Canaries TV, we get it on ESPN Plus. Yeah. And so all these matches are, are, you know, you get up in the mornings are well over the U United States uh, media, and that makes a big difference. Yeah. I really want to ask a bit of a tough question now, guys, actually, for, for the skeptics that are watching, listening to this all over the world. There's a natural, probably nervousness, I'd describe it as, amongst the Norwich fan base. Obviously, Dealer and Michael have, have been here forever, seemingly, now. And there's a whole stigma around foreign ownership arguably American ownership. So what I want to hear from you guys is, what are you going to do differently? Because some, some of the stuff that we hear from other clubs is that you, I say you guys, the mm. American owners aren't present. They're not shaking hands. They're not having conversations. So what are you guys going to do differently and make sure that you, know, you don't have that same problem with Norwich City Football Club, regardless of whether you know, it stays as, as this or whether it progresses onto, onto something bigger in the future? Well, by the way, in America, a lot of the owners don't interact with the fans. Mm. You know, yeah. I've tried to have a personal relationship with the fans in Milwaukee. Part of that is my style, which we talked about. Part of that is we felt in the beginning, coming from Los Angeles, this transplanted New Yorkers, that we were outsiders in a smaller Midwestern city, and we wanted to connect. And and so, you know, this would be our style. Now, it's it's a challenge to bridge the distance from Los Angeles yeah. to Milwaukee to North City. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and by the way, one of the things I think that worked right up front in the very f that first video, and then when I met with Yoli and Michael, I said, "Look, we can't. You know, we we'd love to be here. We can't be here as frequently as we'd like. You know, and that that we thought could have been a limiting factor. Just mm -hmm. put that out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's one of the reasons you have you know really responsible local management. And uh, in Milwaukee, we do the same thing. We have you know we're there." more frequently than we would be here but we've got you know a lot of connectivity with the fan base you know through our local management so we you know we try to do the same thing here and I don't know why you know for us this is more of a much more uh, of a passion mm. for sports than it is a financial investment okay. now you don't I remember when I first uh, we found out that we uh, were getting the team the Brewers Debbie said to me, you're not going to lose all our money, are you? <laughs> 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 we try not to do that. <laughs> uh, but it's not about, you know, we've had real success with the asset. I think there's a good asset play in sports uh, for a number of reasons, you know, globally. But the idea is, you know, to have something that's, you know, passionate that we, we think we know how to do. And, you know, I was mm -hmm. saying yesterday to some friends back home while I was watching, the, you, you watch a practice Practices are practice, whether it's a baseball practice, we've been to mm. NBA practices, you know, you, the guys come out, you, there, there, there's a familiarity of what's going on. Mm. Mm. And we speak the same, you know, even though uh, we, we really knew nothing about either the economics of this sport, or really the sport itself. You know, talking to oh. the executives from that first call, there was a common language. Mm. Yeah. Understand completely the pressure Stewart's under. The challenges the company, you know, the team has. Look, you want to spend every available dollar, mm. but then the question is, how do you spend it? Because you want, and that's one of the things that's great here. You want to have all of what you have here. You, the fans want to see a winning team. Period. Yeah. Right. Good. But you, the fan experience needs to be great. So you mentioned where you sit. It's not great. Wh th where the visitors sit right now isn't great here. We all talk about that and how we can do better with that. You need to have, you know, when you go to that practice, that is a uh, a recruiting item for players when you've got eight perfect pitches mm, at the practice true. field and they've got all the modern technology there yeah. and a building where you can work out that's great and pretty pretty good commissary also great. by the mm. way. Yeah. Really good. Right? Yeah. I mean, food was, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all getting Excellent. seconds, right? Yeah, yeah. Tyler Barnes was here the food's uh, got to be with our media. He was, he was enjoying Sucking his in. meal. <laughs> 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 He's nodding his head. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and, and so we, the, 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 the club has all of that and, but you know, with that still, you have to have a, a competitive team always. 
One of the things that I've been impressed with the most from our first call, Mike, is, well, first of all, we didn't have to have that call because you're just speaking to the average average Joe fan, right? Yeah, but you guys are pretty excited. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, I'm impressed with that. And what I'm, what I'm trying to get you guys to say effectively is you are going to maintain a relationship with Norwich City fans. And Mike, you spoke to me about, you know, spending a, a period of time listening to the fans, learning about the club. So what does that look like in terms of your timeline? Like Mike, um, Mark, you've said this as well, like you're, you're still kind of understanding it all. So mm -hmm. how long does that happen for? And then what could happen after that? Well, it's organic, right? So I've, I've now been to two board meetings. Starting the uh, first one was uh, actually on my birthday, September 29th. <laughs> oh, and wow. What a lovely birthday. That was a nice birthday. <laughs> 6 a.m. Uh, <laughs> I was up at 6 a.m. Uh, on a video with the, with the group here. A uh, lot nicer to be with everybody in person. Not bad. And, uh, you know, we just see, we'll just let it happen organically. Mm. You know, they, uh, now we're talking about our personal things here, but I, I talked about this at the uh, AGM. The, the way we structure this is, is very flexible and allows both, it, it puts no pressure on either side. Mm. Right. And uh, I think that's, that's, good. that's useful. It, it yeah. I guess, you know, you, um, you, you bought out Michael Folger and you, you bought mm -hmm. his shares. He, he was a brilliant person and I know a lot of Norris. And he's still on the board, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Um, is the aim over time to in increase that shareholding? Is that what the, the end goal is? Well, that would, yeah, that would be the goal. Yeah. And, you know, because it wouldn't, it w w this, We'd like to be in with both feet, yeah. But we want to make sure before yeah. we jump into the deep end of the pool that yeah. we know what we're doing. And I guess that's the beautiful and thing, Mike, isn't it? Is it, it? Until we get to that stage, you've got time to almost take a step back, look at things, learn, and that that's invaluable. Yeah, and really taking direction from the group here. Yeah, uh, from you know Anthony Richens and Sam Jeffrey and, and Stuart. We spent a couple hours with Stuart yesterday, uh, but really understanding what we can help with from, from their perspective, not coming in and saying, you know, here's what you need to do, yeah. rather listening, understanding what they need. And we, in the few hours we spent with Stuart yesterday, we spoke about a number of things that he felt we could, we could help with. Yeah, these are um, specific projects. Mm. Yeah. Right, okay. And, um, so right. you know, and, and uh, one of which would resonate with fans, not. You don't have to tell us that. Talking, of, well, you know, you, first of all, you, uh, you end up with a competitive disadvantage if you talk about what you're doing mm. in a way. True. And uh, you know, and separately, and we find this with our team too. There's there's teams in forgetting about let's talk about player recruitment. In baseball, there's teams that are always leaking. We're talking to this player. We're mm. talking to that player. Well, they just you know either you get the player or you don't. So you know, if, if you talk about player recruit, oh, we're going to talk help with player recruitment, which I, frankly we can't. We did understand how they do it. There are some ways structurally we can help, but. Um, we met, you know, their player recruitment staff. We met all their analytics people mm -hmm. yesterday after our meeting with Stewart. Uh, their top analytics people were in the a video call with our top analytics people. Nice. Who, Milwaukee, by the way, yeah. in Milwaukee, they, and one of the things we talked about is, do you need everybody on site? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't. We had our three analytics people on the phone on the screen yesterday. We're in three different locations, just because you know numbers are numbers and computers are computers. Yeah. Um, so we know we can help, for example, the, the club build an analytics staff. Yeah. It's something they want to do. Yeah. And, and that will, and that is going on across, you know, you, uh, Europe and is going on quickly, actually. Mm. So we, it's a little bit of an arms race. Uh, and that requires money. So again, it gets back to, well, you know, th there's probably a list of 10 items, a, a dozen maybe that could require capital here that would help continue to advance the cause, mm. uh, much of which wouldn't be visible to the fans. And, and frankly, the fans, I don't go and say to our fans, hey, guess what? We spent $65 million rebuilding our spring training facilities, mm -hmm. what we spent in Milwaukee, in Arizona, I should say. They don't care. They yeah. care yeah. that, you know, yeah. what's the team going to do? Yeah. Right. So Get this year, team, yeah. going yeah. into next year, we're we were already predicted to be one of the top 10 teams in baseball. We have to go demonstrate that, but the fans are more interested in that than the fact that we're about to open a, a $20 million complex in the Dominican Republic. But the players that you develop in those sites all end up you know, coming to the major league. It, it's, it's obviously, you know, we've, we've discussed the Brewers and since you took over in 04 to now, it's been a journey. Let's talk long-term visions for Norwich City. 
let's say we, we sit back down here in 10 years. We'll book it in now. We'll book it in. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does your position look like at the football club and what does the football club look like? What, what's the dream for 10 years from now? Yeah, so, you know, it's hard. I could never have imagined what, in fact, what happened in Milwaukee, I thought would, that happened within 10 years, I thought would be 30 years. Okay. So, you know, uh, business plans, at best, you can look out three years. Okay. And so we're starting to form some plans with, in whatever, con you know, context we're involved with here with the club over the next three years. You know, 10 years, the, the good news is the, the sky's the limit. But... You, you have to you have to protect your downside right we don't you don't want to uh, you never it, it's very hard in all sports if you start here you it's very visible when you get relegated you know it becomes a downward spiral in baseball it's mm. the same thing where right. you know you go from 40,000 fans to 30 to 20 to 10 and then your budget goes down and so so you want to try to put things in steps um, I do believe in the next three years, whatever, even if we, if our involvement stays exactly as it is now, ownership like it is now, you will see some notable differences here mm. uh, yes, in yes. a positive way. And, and by yeah. the way, that's driving, it's not like we're coming in with all these big ideas. We're, th this is incubated by the management mm. okay. and things that they want to do. We talked, we, by the way, we, we had lunch with Dean Smith, who sat with us for about 90 minutes. And what was that yeah. like? Quickly tell me, what was that like? Great. Yeah, yeah. Dean Smith, yeah, nice he's, guy, right? Oh, he's an incredible guy. Mm. Yeah, great conversationalist, asks a lot of questions. It's not about him. You know, it's really easy to talk to. Nice. You know. Yeah, and we want to hear what, yeah. what is, what's his vision, what does he need? Yeah. You know, and, and he was, for example, we, we and it, this wasn't us coming into a club saying we think you need more analytics. Yeah. Stuart Weber had already built an mm -hmm. analytics group. It reminded me of our analytics group in 2014, 2015. And Dean was with a, a club that's now in the Premier yeah, League. Brentford, I believe. Yeah. Brentford yeah. that was yeah. built on yeah. analytics. Yeah. Yeah. And so we had some a lot of questions. Well, what was it like then? Mm. What mistakes did they make in building it? Because it, we know what mistakes we made in building our analytics, but it may be different here. And that will be a component to player evaluation. But then we talked to him, which is also true in our sport. You've got the analytics. You've got all well, the talent evaluators who are seeing with their eyes. And then you've got the, the coach on the field who's watching a match real time and having to make a decision to put in this player, that player, what type of player he wants, and, and how to get everybody to work together. So they have a good communication here between Dean and Stewart, like for sure. And, uh, you know, in 18 seasons at the Brewers, we haven't always had that. And when we haven't had it, we've had some bad seasons. It, it, it sounds as if you're, you're positive about the people you've met, which is great. And there's clearly a very strong infrastructure. You know that. We know that. I think the, the not the concern, but the, the difficulty for Norwich City fans when we have reached the Premier League in the past is it feels like we are not competing on the pitch or financially. Do you think, is that the aim to get the club in a position where we can get to the Premier League and sustain ourselves whether that be financially working clever I know Stuart and, and, and Daniel before and Dean now have tried that but it 100%. always feels we're, yeah. we're not at that level yeah, we're not yeah we wouldn't power. okay so that I can say we both if we thought and and by the way it's easier if you let's say you were in League Two mm. and the fans came out and everybody's happy and you, you tended to compete uh, that's that's not our interest our interest is getting this being a Premier League club yeah on a sustained basis, we yeah. understand the challenges in that. Mm -hmm. No different than the challenges of competing in Major League Baseball. With 30 teams, we are, which I hate to say, we are actually the smallest market in Major League Baseball. If mm -hmm. you look at uh, city size, uh, media size, uh, and but because we have a passionate fan base, we have great sponsors. Probably last night, I sat with the gentleman who runs the Lotus Group mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and uh, is a great sponsor for us here. And you, you try to, as Mike said, on the management side also with the community, you try to bring everybody together so that you can compete. And if you compete smarter, you know, yeah, yes, in some case, we, we all know there's, there's clubs that are bigger, much better capitalized, backed by governments, <laughs> families, <Yeah>. governments. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but the goal, and, and, and by the way, being smart about it, and, and nobody wants to hear this, it means that sometimes you might have to take a step back 
but you want to take one step back. You, you don't want to end up, mm. you know, in desperate desire to compete, getting knocked back, you know, several levels. Mm. That you, you can't have. Mm. Yeah. And, um, you know, we built our club in Milwaukee without really retooling. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah. the basic, one of the playbooks in American sports is, you know, you, you go all in and then you ratchet all the way back. And we've tried to compete on a consistent level, which we've managed to do really since, wow, since yeah. 20, 2008. Mm. We've had one rebuilding year. Yeah. But it's easier said than, and we, we know how hard it is. Mm. And we're not, and, and so that's why I'm hedging some of what I say. And it would not be credible to say, oh yeah, we're gonna be in the Premier League. And, but but, we, but wouldn't be yeah. here, we wouldn't be here. No. But we want to win. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So does everyone here wants to win too? Absolutely. But we really want to win. Yeah. yeah. And it's not fun to watch. Losing. No. It's, it's it was not, not fun. I could say no, we we I, love I, being at the match. No. Yeah. That second half against no. Tottenham sucked. We, right? we, we it sucked. Yeah, that's well Nobody and they still yeah. don't, they're still mad. At, you know we know how the fans feel. Everybody here feels the same way. Yeah. They can't come out and say oh that sucked. Yeah. yeah. But they nobody Dean talked to them. Yeah. He was miserable in yeah. that match. He told the he kept telling he told us he told like yeah. the, the fourth referee, can't you just whistle this yeah. and get you know oh, forget really? that? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So I mean, nobody, everybody no. internally feels the same way that the fans mm. feel. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the people who pour their lives into these things, almost all of them, if they were doing something different, could make more money mm. Mm. and work less hard. One of the things that I've I've got from our conversations again, Mike, straight away was, and and Jack sort of lent into it with that question around your, you know, the five ten year dream aspiration, and you spoke about the word ambition. You brought up ambition, and, and the question that you asked me offline, which I'll present to the fans now definitely publicly, is, you're like, why is success just staying up? Why can't the aspiration be more than that? Yeah. That as a fan, like that's music to my ears, and yeah. I'm buzzing about that. So. Can can we talk about that? Like, is it is success to you guys just staying in the Premier League, or like in ten years' time, could we be could we be higher up than the relegation zone? Like, where 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 do you really dream this club to be? It's it's a really interesting question because it's so it's so different from what what we're used to. I mean, in in the U.S. in you baseball, said, yeah. we're it's World Series or bust. Mm. Every yeah, year. yeah, yeah. It's number one. Or it's a disappointment. If you're not playing the last game of the season and mm -hmm. winning it, it's a disappointment. That's right. And here, I think that's so you come in and, and you want you want to have that same aspiration and that ambition. And I know this club you know, is now in championship, but it's all in steps. Next step, get to the Premier League. Yeah. Then, stay in the Premier League. Yeah. Then, you know, if you're in the Premier League for a few years mm -hmm. consistently. Your options really, yeah. really open up for you, mm. and uh, yeah, so I'd, 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 I'd like to think, and you know, I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself here because we're all, we're all learning. But I'd like to think that we, we can really, really help. Mm. Uh, we can really help push, push that that drive forward. Uh, yeah, so. We we can see things we've done yeah. in Major League Baseball that we can apply here, yeah. <coughs> and push things forward. Mm -hmm. Now, where that takes you, we'll see. Um, and Mike's right. Look, if you know, uh, Premier League media revenues are 100 million pounds a year. So if you start compounding that, yeah, you know, at, at some point the gap between the, the super clubs and and the others isn't as wide because you know there's still a limited number of spots you can fill on the pitch. Uh, injuries are part of the sports. Rand, you know, one of the beautiful things about the sport is that it, you can have a <laughs> also frustrating a random goal. Mm. You know. <laughs> Ahead for 95 minutes and somebody yeah, a deflection, you know, yeah. Def yeah. kicks yeah. it off somebody else, yeah. and then it's a, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just finally, Mark, because I know um, I think this restaurant opens up very shortly, so we might get people coming in ordering those burgers shortly. I, I was really interested earlier when you said that, you know, you you want eventually to. I think you called it. You wanted to go in with two feet with this football club. You. Yeah, that would be the goal. That's the goal. And, and how does that look to you in terms of what is going in two feet for you? Well, I think, you know, and again, we keep taking a step back and saying we're trying to learn. We, yeah. have, we have to get the whole picture of, of what has to be mm -hmm. done. And then you want, you need all of it. I remember before I bought the Brewers, Robert Kraft runs a pretty successful organization, the New England Patriots. And they talked about having to be uniformly excellent in everything you do. Yeah. And it's not, you know, if you just focus on the field, it, you know, so, you know, we want, 
we, so we're learning how big a vision that is mm. and, and helping with, with all of that. And, uh, and by the way, probably, so when I say you can only have like a three-year business plan, it's probably going to take 10 years mm. to, to try to realize in some of the things that we're, we're talking about here and, uh, and, and to focus on, you know, qualitatively moving forward, even though there, there may not be apparent progress year to year. Mm. And um, it requires some patience, you know, sports is. Yeah. It's frustrating. You said the patience yeah. word. <laughs> pa yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but you need but you but uh, patience can't be an excuse, you know, um, to you know, it, to your fans, to yourself. Yeah, right? yeah. And and we'll know if we're not. We know when we're not doing what we need to mm. do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we know. Yeah. And what Mike's saying, by the way, it's true. So we made the playoffs. as the first year we didn't. Um, it was really painful for the first time in five years not to make the playoffs, missing by one game. But every year when we lost that last game, it was it was oh. brutal. 2018, it took me to Christmas from like the end, from Halloween to Christmas. I was miserable, I mean, miserable. Yeah. Wake up in the morning, miserable, because yeah. we yeah. we should have been in the World Series that yeah. year, and then we could have won. Yeah. You're accustomed we'll, to yeah. being a part we'll of our city. Then <laughs> we'll be living in dying, you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say. To, to comfort the fans, you know, maybe or to or to fire up the fans. What what is your, what's your message to the North City supporters now? Because they're still they're still learning about you guys, right? You're learning, but also they're learning. So, what's your message to the Yellow Army about anything and everything? That's to both of you, by the way. The Yellow Army, I like, yeah, that. I like that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's we're, cool. We're part of the Yellow Army. You're part of the Yellow Army. Yeah. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What like is your message to the fans? You know, I, I, we didn't come, we came to present ourselves more, not to, uh, you know, we're not in a position yet to, we're, because we're still learning, and I, I know I'm ducking the question here, but um, I, hopefully they can see our, our passion and desire to get involved. Uh, hopefully they hear, look, we, we have looked at clubs for 10 years and we've chosen this one. Mm. So I think there is something special here. Yeah. And I think when you live it day to day, you probably too close to it to, to realize that and uh, you know and and we want what they want yeah. which uh, but but it, and it's to win but also to continue to you know work on making the stadium a, a great place to watch a match uh, which we'll focus on helping build a talent pipeline and one of the fun things about building a talent pipeline is you can start following players from when they're young mm -hmm. come through the Academy mm -hmm. It's one, one of the things we've done really well in Milwaukee. Um, in the beginning, it was sign free agent, sign Jeff Supon. But the guys who ended up taking that team to the playoffs were all the young guys, Ryan Braun, Prince Fielder, Corey Hart, Billy Hall, Ricky Weeks. Ricky Weeks who still works for us, by the way. Uh, you know, they were all the guys in like the minor leagues then. When, we, when everybody was excited about signing Soup, those were the guys, I'm not sure if any of them were in the major leagues in 2006, maybe Ricky was, Billy. And, and so that's part of what we, and, and they want to, and that's what they want to do here. Mm. So if they were doing one thing, and we thought they had to do another thing, we would not have done this. Mm. Mm. You know, it's like going in and saying you want to live in a really nice traditional home and getting a very contemporary architect to build it. So we're, our vision matches the vision that the, the people have here. Including, by the way, the vision, Mi you know, Michael and Delia have, uh, you know, they've put a really good staff in place mm. here. Good. And, um, you know, I don't see any weakness, you know, no. I think we would build around, I don't see any weaknesses in the staff here. Mm. You would build around it. And, of yeah. course, look, everybody, there's a score, one of the hard things in sports, also investments, which I do, my day job, I call it. You know, Dean Smith has a, a scorecard every day, so does Stewart. And, you know, I think, they, they know that's a one of my uh, good friends is Joe Torre. He's a Hall of Fame manager for the Yankees. Before he became the Yankees manager, he'd been the manager for a couple of other clubs and, and failed. And he used to say he knew you know that the, the day he got his next job was a, a day closer to getting fired from that job. Hmm. Everybody knows about the scorecard in sports. So you know, uh, yeah, and, and frankly now there's less pressure on us. We don't have to make any of those decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one but, day. But yeah. but there's but the folks in charge here are strong yeah I would I would add that there's a reason why I found you guys 
online. Mm. You know, I, I really pay attention to what mm. people are saying. I really care what the fans think and what the fans want. And again, he said, we want what you want, which is true. There are really great people here, um, but I get it. I hear sort of where the fans are coming from, and it's really helpful to learn and understand what they're saying. And I know everyone here really cares too, uh, but you know, we're here, we want to win. Um, and, uh, and we want to engage with the fans. Absolutely. By the way, Mike is yeah. leading a fan engagement charge for us. At the, at the yeah. We had a lot of success in Milwaukee, but a little less fan engagement this year. People got yeah. accustomed to it. But also, we got, you know, frankly, I think we got lazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we're not lazy people. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll be making the big decisions at Norris City. Mark, Mike, Mike um, a real pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Mike. It was fun.